Hey everyone, Tanner Bell here and welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, we are all talking about how to apply large decals to our cars. I don't know about you guys, but everyone seems to want to know all the tips, all the tricks, all the material that is needed to apply large car decals to their car. Now, traditionally, you may get orders for company logos to put on a car, things like that. And as an added service, you can actually offer to put this on a client's car. We love this idea because you're taking all the guesswork out of it for the customer. You're not just giving them an amazing vinyl decal, you're giving them a full service where they're able to say, hey, I'm gonna bring you my car, you're gonna put the decal on, and you're going to make sure it looks amazing. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you guys exactly how to do it start to finish. It's going to be awesome. We're gonna talk all about materials. I'm gonna give you guys some really great tips and tricks for weeding, applying the transfer tape, and applying it to the car. We're actually using the back window of my truck today, so I'm super excited to share with you guys exactly how to do this, and it's going to be really awesome. Now, if you're someone that loves their die cutting machine and you are like, Tanner, I think I want to sell. I want to invite you, my friend, to our upcoming webinar training that is the five secrets to making money with your machine, even if you haven't sold before. It's going to be linked down below. You can pick the time that's convenient for you, and I cannot wait to see you at the webinar training. It's a little bit right at an hour of training, but you will want to have your notebook and you'll want to be ready to dial in. But let's go ahead and get started in today's video, and I'm going to share with you guys my favorite tools to do this project with. Now, what I love about this process is that this is really a technique based project, not so much needing a ton of different materials. So what we're using today is a Cricut. Um, this is our Cricut maker. You can use an Explorer, an Explorer 2, any of those machines because we're using that fine point blade. Now you can also use a silhouette. The software will look a little bit different. So we pulled out our 12 by 24 mat today. This is a pretty big logo. Um, luckily it didn't have to be more than one mat. Other ways you could do this to make a really big decal on the side of a car, on the side of a van, you could easily follow one of our tutorials on how to make a larger than map project um, to do that. Super easy. You can line it up and no one will be ever able to tell that it was more than one map. So that's a fun hack to be aware of. Um, if you're saying, Tanner, I need something three times this size, that's okay. You can do that and you can, you know, check out some of our larger than map projects down below. So next up, you want to make sure you have a quality vinyl. This one right here is from 143 Vinyl. This is Starcraft Premium Vinyl. The number one thing that is go make or break this project is the quality of vinyl. You could use Oracle 651, you can use all your favorite vinyl, but make sure it's a quality one. We love the StarCraft Premium, we love um, the Oracle 651, anything like that would be fantastic for the project. We have personally tested these vinyls on decals, on the cars and things like that. They will last for a really long time, um, leaving the car outside, leaving it in the sun, taking it through the car wash. If you will follow the steps that we're sharing with you today, you are gonna have a really long lasting car decal that you'll be able to sell, that you'll be able to um, do to your own car and things like that. So it's gonna be awesome. So I hope you're taking some notes on some of your new favorite tips for applying these large car decals. Next up, you're also going to want to see that we are using rubbing alcohol as well as paper towel. This is here very purposefully because even after cleaning it, which I highly recommend to do with some soap and whatnot if it's dirty if you leave the car outside it's just great step one step two is after to still use the rubbing alcohol if you've ever watched any of my videos about working with rubbing alcohol and then not working with rubbing alcohol the you know the security of being able to secure it to the glass 10 times better with the rubbing alcohol. So we're gonna share with you guys how we clean the surface area with the rubbing alcohol and some paper towel and then next up, you might be surprised that I'm actually using masking paper transfer tape. 
I love using masking paper transfer tape when in a correlation with the rubbing alcohol. It's going to give you an amazing result really easily with the masking paper transfer tape. If you've struggled with this before and you may have used traditional um, transfer tape and maybe not used the rubbing alcohol, these two hacks are going to change the game for applying car decals, especially large ones. Now next up, you'll also see we have a squeegee. I love a squeegee for larger projects. Highly recommend having one of these. If you do not have one, we'll link them from 143 down below. You can find them on Amazon, but hey, you may, might not have one today and you still wanna do the project, just recycle a gift card. So we also have two weeding tools. We have a traditional weeding tool that's super um, sharp and it has a little pokey tool. Um, that you can go around the edges. And then we have the 143 vinyl pin pin tool, which is really nice to, for all those inner pieces of letters and shapes and things like that. So honestly, in addition to our um, tape measure, you don't really need much. There's not many things that um, most Cricut crafters wouldn't have that you would need for this. So even as a beginner, if you test this out on your own car quite a few times, I think you'll be able to successfully do these for customers um, very confidently. So if you guys are excited, let's go through the process on what you need to do the project. So the first thing you need to do is measure your car, whether you wanna do the side of your car, a whole side of window, anything like that. You just wanna get out there and measure what the working space you have to apply the decal. That's gonna allow you to decide if you're going to be doing a larger than mat project or it will fit within the size of a 12 by 12 or a 12 by 24 mat. If you're saying, Tanner, I want to do a large decal that's larger than Matt, my friends, we have great training for you on how to do so. So we'll link that down below um, find some of our live streams that have like really great hacks in there. Um, it's a larger process, but I think you'll really enjoy mastering it. So check that out. Um, luckily for my back windshield, it's going to look fantastic using a 12 by 24 map. So I'm really excited to now, you'll want to take those dimensions, keep that in mind as we go through and upload the cut file into Cricut Design Space and start getting it ready to cut. All right, my friends. So now that we know what size we have to work with, you're going to want to upload your um, logo into Cricut Design Space. All you wanna do is click the bottom um, side panel that says upload. You'll want to follow the uploading steps and then you'll be able to click the logo and insert it right in to Cricut Design Space. We have the logo right here. It's nice and sized right for our decal on the back of the windshield. Today's logo is going to be a little less than 20 inches by 12 inches. So we're right there in the size for a 12 by 24 inch mat. And believe it or not, maybe you're going to be doing some back windshields as well. Um, and this is going to be a lot of fun for you guys to be able to follow along. Now, if you're sitting here saying, Tanner, I struggle applying a six by six decal onto a frame or a, on a card or anything like that, my friend, I want to let you know that we have a great hack coming up that is going to help you be able to confidently align this on the window and be able to transfer it down. You're not going to struggle. You're going to have great success. And I can't wait to share with you how to do it. Now, when you are making larger decals, what I want to let you know is especially for a car, you want to have the letters to be pretty bold and larger. You want great surface area to stick to the glass. So what may happen time and time for some of your customer logos is that you're going to want to simplify the logo. Okay, you're gonna to want to simplify the logo. Maybe they have a graphic like we do. Ours is really simple, thankfully, I love that. Um, and it's modern, it looks great, but some may have to be simplified. You may have to take some things out and manipulate it just a little bit. You can do that because if you leave, you know, 
a really a lot of tiny pieces, those are going to be the first things to fall off of the project. We don't want that to happen. We want this project to last for years to come. So just be mindful of that as you are preparing your design in Cricut Design Space. Um, I want you guys to be you know, really careful about that to do great work for others, um, whether you're working for yourself or a customer. And you can get it approved by them, but honestly, in my experience, if you quickly clean it up, you know, you make some letters larger, things like that, um, you'll, you're only improving for the car decal. You also want to think about the whole point of the car decal on a car is that you can see it um, in another car. So you want to be able for them to read it. So, you know, you can have it be mindful of the sizing and things like that as well. So this right here um, is going on a work truck for us. This is part of our um, property management. We have some rentals. So that's what this decal is going on. So you can kind of just be mindful of that. And there's really not too much more to think about from the design element. After you've sized it appropriately for your window um, or car, you can click make it and you're going to see how it lines up. It's letting us know that it is larger than a traditional mat. We are gonna to have to pull out that 12 by 24 mat um, and you can see it's right here. Now I'm going to, for safety purpose, just move it just an inch or two down just to make it easier. So if we encased it and line up our vinyl perfect right here, totally fine. And this looks really good. So we can just you know play around with it if needed. It fits really well and it looks really easy. This is the super easy part of doing the project. Everyone knows how to cut vinyl. It's really simple. We don't have to mirror it. Um, we can press continue. We're going to connect to our machine and then we're going to select our base material. Now we already spoke about it. We're going to choose premium vinyl. We're choosing a vinyl that is going to last and we're gonna be proud of. So now we can choose if we need to give a little bit more pressure or not. We will go ahead and use more pressure. My kind of tip here is if you've had a blade and you've worked with it quite a bit for maybe over a month or two, I like to just go ahead and give more pressure just to get a little bit more out of my blade. You can always sharpen your blade. We have some great hack videos you can check out to get hacks on that, or you just want to make sure you're replacing your blade regularly. So all we're going to do now is we're going to add our vinyl to our mat and then we'll be able to, you know, load it into the machine and start cutting. All right, we've added our vinyl to our 12 by 24 inch mat. We've loaded it into our machine and now we can press the flashing Cricut button. It's going to cut out and then we'll be able to start weeding. All right guys, so it's done cutting. You can see it here. There is a lot to weed, but have no fear, it's gonna be really easy. So first things first, before we even start weeding, we are gonna grab the scraper tool. This is a great burnishing tool, and we wanna go ahead and burnish all the vinyl down. So this is gonna help us have better success weeding really easily just like so. So we want to burnish this down to the backing so that it makes it even easier for us to weed. A big misconception is sometimes people think, oh my goodness, my blade did not cut through properly. Um, but the actual case is that they did not burnish it down and then their vinyl is just already not stuck to the backing as well as it should be. And it causes you to not have the best success. So once you've done that, now we're going to go over here and we're going to find the edge of any letter. I like to rip it, so rip it just like this. You will then be able to go around and start weeding. So I like to kind of go around the project. You'll see if you ever try to go fully, like just peel it up, it gets really complicated. So I like to go truly around the project like this. So I like kind of rip it and kind of pick different areas to go with. So see, we went around the decal and it's a lot easier to control once you go around the decal. And notice right here, my friends, the L is still not, it was connected. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna slowly lay it back down 
and we're just going to get control of our L just like this and we're going to fix that here in one second. So just like so, we're going to line it up, hold it down and then peel it back and we'll line that back up. So that is definitely going to be something we can easily save and how we're going to do it is we have it positioned back down. We're going to peel it up right here. We're going to lay it down and then we're going to peel it up right here. And this is actually totally fun to just pick it up and kind of work with it. So always be careful. Always like to go slow. And then look at that. You can burnish again, just like so. And it looks totally normal. So now we grab the pin pin tool and we'll get just the inner pieces. One of the perks about doing larger decals like this is it's a really easy to weave because you can see everything super easily. And the only overwhelming part is probably that first peel trying to go around the project. Honestly, my friends, this would probably be the smallest letters that I would want to go. You can measure these. You can see they're right at almost an inch, probably a little more than a half inch each for the management. Um, but everything else is really a not size. We're just continuing to weed out. You definitely want to look around the project from a few different angles because sometimes you can't see everything that you need to weed, which can be frustrating at times. But now that we've weeded the entire project, what we're going to do now is actually apply the paper transfer tape. Now for today's hack, we're going to purposely apply extra transfer tape up at the top. So this is going to give us a really great starting point because we're actually going to leave the backing on the project as we position it for the car. So get excited for this little craft hack, but notice we're being very intentional to add maybe two to three inches of additional masking paper transfer tape right up at the top. So let me share with you what I mean by that. So we're gonna take this and I'm gonna make it a little bit larger than the decal, like so. And then I'm gonna rip it just like this. I'm gonna give some extra space right here. And then I'm gonna do the taco method. The taco method is holding it like a taco and then we're gonna take it right here and then place it down. This relieves a lot of air bubbles and then you can grab your burnishing tool, your squeegee, whatever you wanna call it, and you're going to be golden. So now we're going to take another piece and it'll end up being maybe three pieces of masking paper transfer tape. And now we're applying this down. And the masking paper transfer tape is not super strong. And that's one of the perks, believe it or not, of using this for great, easy success. So you're going to see this all come together really well here in a minute. So now that we have it prepared, we have some extra tape right up here at the top. What we're going to do now is take our true control knot and we're just going to cut off the extra right here. And then we're going to peel this up just like so. And now we're actually going to take the entire project out to the car, clean it with the rubbing alcohol, and then we'll be able to start applying this to the truck. So first things first, when we're out to the truck, what we're going to do is we're going to take the rubbing alcohol and you're going to need a few pumps of the alcohol for such a large surface area. What this is going to do is going to help your vinyl um, adhere really well onto the glass. So you just want to rub it and you want to let it dry. Now we're out in the sun, so it's really easy to let it dry um, as it's going to dry super quick, but you're going to see that it's going to keep everything nice and clean. There's going to be no pollen. There's going to be no residue or anything like that on the glass. The first thing you want to do is line up your decal on the truck. Now notice that we have the backing intact and we've been able to make sure we have a few extra inches of our transfer tape um, available to us so that we're able to position it and you have the freedom of moving it around. Guys, this is crucial for you to be able to stick it up, move it back, take a look at it and say, is this perfectly straight? Do I, is it perfectly centered? Um, one thing I'm really happy about is that we have the red brake lot right above the center of the truck. So that's a great pinpoint for us to kind of help, you know, us kind of evenly uh, space this out right under that brake lot. And especially for this logo, having the, 
you know, square image. It's really nice to be able to line that up. And you really just want to make sure that it's not A, crooked or B, not centered. Those are two things that for people that have OCD or anything like that are going to notice right off the bat. What you're going to do is you're going to start at the top corner and you're going to start peeling back that transfer tape. Definitely proceed with caution. Go slower than you think, especially for your first one. And then as you go, you'll kind of get into a rhythm. You'll be peeling it back. You'll be um, using the squeegee tool to apply it to the truck. And you just want to start in one corner, work your way down and over. It's very simple once you get the hang of it. And this is a great hack if you're ever worried about placement. This is something big. This is something that you don't want to have to, you know, waste vinyl on again. And here's the thing, my friends, once you have cleaned the glass with rubbing alcohol and the vinyl touches that super clean glass, it's stuck. It's not going to come up. It's not going to be easy to reposition without having to recut a whole new project. So go nice and slow, peel it back, and then you want to squeegee as you go. Feel free to take a second, breathe, and have a lot of fun with it. The more you do this, the more comfortable you will be. So now this is the best part of using the paper transfer tape. One, you were able to see through it really well, super simple. And then secondly, it's going to be able to peel off like a champ. You just want to start in a corner and again, just start peeling off that transfer tape and you'll start revealing your vinyl decal on the back of your truck. What did you guys think? We conquered an amazing project today and I am so proud of you guys. And I honestly cannot wait to see what you're adding to your truck, your car, your van, anything like that. The possibilities are truly endless. Heck, if you have nothing to, you know, add a decal to, you could add a decal to your car about your business where you do car decals and so much more of custom projects with your Cricut. That would be so much fun. You could add your Instagram handle. You could add your email, phone number, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, you could add that for a fun car decal. And then the proof is in the pudding that you can do a great car decal for yourself. And then I know other people will be asking you to do them for them as well. And it's a great idea. So if you are interested in selling, learning how to start an Etsy shop, uh, make money from home and be able to rock your die cutting business, I want to invite you to my five secrets to making money crafting, even if you haven't sold before. Check it out. It's the first link down below. It is an action packed, uh, webinar. We have had thousands of people go through it, always have great results, and it is so much fun. So my friends, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I've been meaning to do this for literally years and it is a lot of fun. So if you enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel for more DIY videos and Cricut education videos. We love putting those together. Check out our membership if you need access to thousands of cut files, hundreds of fonts, our commercial license to again, make money crafting with your die cutting machine and so much more. I love our member only community and you get a ton of member only projects. So check that out as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye now.